What's going on guys, Waco uh, and Constant Kwong from hey Revolution guys. here at the Revolution Watch Bar. And we're so excited to share one of my latest projects uh, with Cartier. So it is a series of NSO watches, the Auton Cintres, inspired by a very famous watch created by Fred Astaire for his horse trainer named Felix Leach back in 1929. Mm -hmm. And they happen to be Auton Cintres with very special dials that happen to have these exploded Arabic indexes and indexes and hands that are luminous. Auton Cintres is actually born in uh, 1921, based very similar to the watch that was launched uh, this year, the Tong Normal, back in 1917. Tong Cintre actually translated to exactly curved tank. So um, this watch is, uh, is one of my favorite watches um, from the uh, Cartier collection. In, in the 20s, where the, the watch was born, uh, it's crazy breakthrough, right? Uh, most of these watches back in the uh, late 1910s and 20s are very, um, I would say, conservative. Yeah, Small. I mean, I mean you, know, I, you know, I always say, mm -hmm. and I've repeated this a bunch of times, so forgive me for repeating mm -hmm. myself, but <laughs> if, if Rolex is the king of sports yeah. and Paddock is the king of complications, then we have to agree that Cartier is the king of elegance. Yes. And I think the great thing about the Ton Cintre is, in fact, it it possesses this wonderful optical illusion. Yes. So it looks like an almost completely curved radius and then a curved dial. And you're wondering, well, how the hell are you get a movement in there? In fact, the, the case back of the watch is kind of like put up yeah, into the curve yeah. and it creates this incredible optical illusion. Now, what's really cool about this is it's really one of the very first watches that's following the curvature of the human yes. wrist, right? Yes, that's true. I think it's one of the first ones. And uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the the tank uh, son, uh, Sintre, back in the 20s, um, many of these um, brands are making uh, wristwatches based on pocket watches, right? right? And then Cartier, Louis Cartier is a genius, you know? He's the one that, hey, let's design a real, real wristwatch to wear on the wrist, right? Yes. So that is why all of the watches that you see, of course, including the Tong Sintre, it's designed specifically for the wrist. To me, my favorite Tong Sintre that was ever created was a watch that was created in 1929 and which was given from Fred Astaire to his horse trainer, Felix Leach. Cool. And that watch was extraordinary. And you know, I, I've checked with Cardi and he said there were a few examples of this created, but it's the only one I've ever seen because it had luminous Arabic indexes and luminous cathedral hands. And if you think about wow. it in the context of 1929, I mean, you're taking this incredibly elegant watch, but you're adding loom to it. It's like, yo, Felix, <laughs> where are you going with this yeah. watch, bro? <laughs> it's like, yeah, he's, he's, he's going for like a- like Nightclubs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah nightclubs. Right. Trying to bring in girls, you know, right. hey, look at my, 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 my watch with my light, you know, like, like exactly. right? Yeah. I love insane, that. Yeah. And this watch was so important that in 2004, when Cartier did kind of a relaunch of the mm -hmm. Tonsintre or an homage to the Tonsintre, they used it as their base for that design. So that watch, which was very beautiful, which was created in platinum and gold versions, features a uh, dial with Arabic mixes. Oh, wow. right? But what they've never done is another version of that watch with luminous Arabic indexes. So I want to show you a couple of the versions of the watch that we brought along today. I can't wait. So this is my personal version of the watch. Mm -hmm. um, this is with this sort of beautiful gradiated blue dial, uh, which is actually very reminiscent of my crash, actually. Yes. And as you can see on the watch, you can see that there's the Arabic indexes, which are luminous. But then the question became, what kind of hands are you going to put on mm -hmm. it, right? Because we didn't want to put cathedral hands yeah. on it. Somehow, it just didn't seem so Cartier, even though that watch from 1929 has them. Mm -hmm. And what was incredible about the designers at Cartier, specifically a gentleman named Raphael, um, who, much like the Renaissance artist, was an absolute genius, right? <laughs> uh, he came up with the idea of doing apple or breguet style hands, but with a luminous dot just in the center with a hollow Oh, wow. So that's what you see here. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, I see it now. Wow. And then, uh, uh, and yeah, so you know, these are watches that when we actually saw the design sent back to us, and of course, when we saw the watches in real life this year at Watches and Wonders, I mean, the actual watch itself just surpasses wow. any of the dreams we may possibly have. So, I just want to show you a couple of other versions. So, that's a blue one that happens to be my watch. I'm lucky enough to have actually two of these. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I also have this gray one. Oh man. Uh, and I have to say this gray is so special. Like wow. the initial concept for this watch was more of a slate gray dial. Mm -hmm. And then again, the extraordinary design team at Cartier came up with this almost like gray with a little hint of green, uh, kind of absent gray. It's beautiful. Um, and then I love the fact that it's wow. counterpointed by a blue steel hands and of course a, a ruby cabochon as well, which I think it makes a really wow. wonderful combination. Great harmon yes. harmonic, harmonic design, man. Thanks, like, man. Really. And uh, I like the, um, you know, that the whole case is great, but you know, with the ruby cabochon, it just shines. 
So this is a watch that is uh, larger than life and is made for a larger than life person. I can see that, uh, yeah. <laughs> it is a watch with a yellow gold case mm -hmm. and a burgundy dial. And that yeah. to me is an incredible piece because it's just so rare to see a watch like this. I've never seen a Tonsin Clay with a burgundy dial. Uh, it, I have never seen yeah. one as well, yeah. And, and then we put the light on there as well. It's just so cool to look it's at. It's so great, right? I mean, when you're looking at, um, you know, the original, like the tone tree that we you know we used to see, you know, um, now that has like uh, like luminous Arabic numerics and hands, yeah. it's it's way more practical now, you know. It's, as a dress watch, <laughs> but it's like way more practical. You can wear it to the nightclub, you know. You can still see uh, the read the time. And, you know, I, I mean, the execution is beautifully made, man. I mean, really, congratulations to you and thank your you. friends. Well, I have to say what's amazing about the watch is the detail. So if you look at this watch, for example, mm -hmm. if you look at the, um, the minute track, the Chemin de Fer, it's actually gold as well, so yeah. it's gilt, right? And then on top of that, if you look at each of the Arabic in indexes, there is a surround that's also yes. gold as well. And the delicacy and nuance with which they've configured these dials is, again, a testimony to Cartier's absolute mastery of elegance. But there's two more versions I want to show you, so there's one here. So I have a friend who wow. um, is a big aficionado of cigars, right? And oh, okay, I see where the inspiration comes from. And then, yeah, yeah. And so then we were asking, I was asking him, what do you think in terms of color? And he said, well, I like a rose gold case. Mm -hmm. And I like the dial of the, of, of the, and I like the dial to echo the color of my favorite cigars, which are um, Cohiba Bieke cigars. Wow. And Bieke cigars are really cool because they um, are simultaneously some of the most complex cigars in the world, oh. but some of the lighter ones, right? Mm. And the reason is that they use a leaf called the Medio Tempo leaf. It's very cigar nerd information. Wow. Medio Tempo. And Medio Tempo leaves only grow on the top of the plant and receive the greatest sunlight, you know? So we tried as much as possible to match the color of wow. the Medio Tempo leaves in his cigars. And I think Cartier did a pretty incredible job. Stunning, actually. Yeah. yeah. Thank I mean, you. It's, it's cool, man. I mean, with the uh, rose oak case and the dial, man, it just fits nicely together. It's Thank like you. a full cigar. So I, I think this for this last oh, watch, wow. which is a platinum watch with a glossy black dial and an onyx cabochon, I, I think uh, I can reveal the owner of this because you will see this watch in this wrist pretty soon. And oh. he is the legendary Ahmed Shari Rahman, oh, wow. time mechanic. Congratulations, uh, Shari. Got it. This is beautiful. <laughs> and I love this because it's in on, on some moment very a classic. But of course, when you hit the loom, it's crazily oh, like modern. And it is just a breathtaking watch. My yeah. God, this is such a beautiful watch. I mean, I'm sorry, Wei. You know, this has got to be my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, you were you also mentioning because of the loom, um, yes. you really see it because of the black dial and yeah. this greater contrast. But you know, I mean, I think that what's nice about the watch and mm -hmm. what was the incredible gift given to us by Cartier was the idea of making one for each person to express that person's personality. Yeah. Um, the NSO program is something that is a real treasure to me. Uh, I, I, I feel really honored to be part of that and to be able to make watches from time to time through the NSO program and to spread the love of Cartier uh, in this way. I mean, big congratulations, Wei, you know, um, and also uh, thank you so much, I know Cartier, you know, it, the NSO programs has always been something that is, uh, I think, uh, special to many of my, my, my friends that are also Cartier collectors. It, it, it makes the relationship between the, um, the real collectors, the people that really love the brand, right. to make a piece, especially, you know, personal to them, and it, it really keeps the relationship between the brands and the collectors very, very close. Yeah. Well, you know, that's maybe one thing I like to talk about as well, because Sometimes people mistake the NSO program to, for it to be like a PS Unique program. Yes. And it's not. And I, I would really like to, uh, for people to understand this as well. What Cartier is doing and has always done is it's working together with the client to create extraordinary timepieces. And when those designs emerge, they become part of Cartier's lexicon, right? So after I made, for example, my Ton Sin Play with the mm -hmm. beautiful um, sort of rose yeah. champagne dial, I saw other watches that had a similar configuration. And I have to say, it didn't bother me at all. I mean, people ask me that. And, and I said, no, because it's part of the continuation of the design language of Cartier. And this incident, and incidentally, this IP, this intellectual property belongs to Cartier, right? So mm -hmm. I just want people to understand that, that when you engage in an NSO project, you are helping in some ways to engage with the Maison to build the yep. design language for the future, you know, mm -hmm. to become part of this story. But it doesn't mean that that watch is a watch that they will never repeat. Yeah. It just means that, that you are, have the possible to own, you just means you have the possibility to own something really beautiful. Yep. Generally speaking, I, I don't know of any exact um, reproduction of a specific watch. Mm -hmm. 
but if they do like the indexes from here, they might use it in a different watch. If they like the uh, hands from here, they might use it mm -hmm. in a different watch yeah. as well. And I think that that's wonderful. I think that that's, you know, and, and, I, and I love this idea of sharing and working together in this community of Cartier lovers to yeah. create something cool. I think, it, it, I mean, if it's a great design, it's a great design, you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, it's, 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 it keeps the story going, you know, it going forward, you know, Cartier, um, it's, um, it, it has a huge history, of course, you know, but uh, of course, you know, our friends at Cartier are also looking forward and to bring this, um, you know, the, the special ed auto program is uh, uh, it's always fascinating to me and I think it's really amazing that um, it's, it's done so delicately, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yes, I know, you know, um, it's, uh, there's so, you know, you have many variants, you can actually do different things, you know, but end of the day, the Maisons are very, very tasteful. <laughs> uh, for, for me personally, I think I would love to have NSO made. So, uh, you know, Katia, you know, uh, I'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Kassi. Thank you so much, Wei, for sharing. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, Cheers. Thank you. Take care. Cool.